Rightio, um, we're on to like a, a weird section of this, I guess. Um, you've got the, the bridge, um, basically, uh, the, one, the one we made a little while ago. Um, now, this were obviously are made in brass, and I want it, uh, the original was nickel plated. Um, and I just happened to have one of these, like, eBay, like, brush nickel plating things, which I have actually um, had some success with before. But th th this I've uh, retrieved, out, retrieved out of the dust pile, so we'll see how it goes. Basically, um, yeah, the kit's pretty self-explanatory, but it's an electrical plating thing uh, where you've got a nickel plating solution and you connect one side of the... Your, your power supply to the that comes with the kit to um, the workpiece and you clean it and then um, you clean it with like a another brush on solution kind of thing and then you get these like sponge sponge wands down here that you brush on so we'll see how it goes I mean I've had some success with it but not entirely all the time the, the critical thing is you you need um, to have the thing absolutely saturated the, this this um, like one thing and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but uh, yeah we'll just keep going and see if we get some silver on it actually see a problem here the wires actually come off it um, well let me get back to you and uh, uh, this is a disaster Well, um, what I did with the plating in the end, instead of using these like foam wands, they call them, basically you absolutely saturate it in the plating solution. So when you basically actually rub it over the thing you want to plate, that's all you're doing is, is making sure you get an electrical connection between the two. So as this thing, this bridge was so small, I just dumped it in the in the solution and then connected the negative end to the uh, the work I can't remember which way it's negative or positive it tells you in the instructions on the workpiece and then actually just put the other end of the wire in the solution sort of thing so you're doing the same thing um, I've never had uh, you know I've never spent the time to clean up something to get a perfect finish but you know, bearing in mind with this project we're after a sort of patinaed look anyway. Um, da -ta -da! There we go, so we've now got a nickel plated um, tailpiece for it and I'm not, I'm not unhappy with that at all. It looks, looks nice and old sort of thing. Um, doesn't look like brass anymore. I mean I could have probably just sprayed a bit of paint over it but nickel plating, it's the, you know, I mean, if you took your time over it and probably did about three or four applications, it'd probably come up really nice. But I'm happy with that, to be honest. I think that looks great. And, you know, you can't see any signs now of the solder or anything like that. So I think, um, yeah, that's a bit of a result as well. So um, that's like ready to, you know, ready to go on now when, uh, when um, we're ready for finishing. So. Great stuff, thank you. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to 3R Guitars again. Um, you saw me like finishing off yesterday and, and just spraying the final coats of lacquer on it. Um, I am absolutely delighted with the way this thing turns out and it always is like a, 
a love hate thing with with uh, with finishing one minute you you know you're just tearing your hair out because nothing seems to be going right with your spray gun or your lacquer or this that and the other and we saw when I put the first coat of red lacquer on the back and I'll try to do it in here and uh, yeah we won't beat about the bush it looked look bloody awful but you know I sanded it back and I have got the experience to realize that um, you know I, I know what kind of background what kind of undercoat I want for the finish I want and for this I want it to look antique and everything like that and but I wasn't really expecting the the, 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 the gorgeous results I got kind of thing um, and uh, yeah I'm so I'm absolutely over the moon with the way it looks and let's give you a look now and so this is the top here um, and what I did as you remember I just airbrushed really lightly um, a darker edge to this sort of a bit like a extremely um, mild sunburst kind of thing and um, the sides and the back kind of thing um, I did the same with a, a, a brownie red and so the 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 the, the, the lacquer the the, the stain I, I, I lacquery stain I, I sprayed on the sides I wrapped around the the edges a little bit then also put it round round here just to give it a bit of consistency sort of thing um, and you know I love this like blotchiness where it looks as though it's faded and stuff just love that and uh, yeah so th that's that's what really floats my boat one of the aspects that floats my floats my boat from instrument making um, is you know the amount of finishing I've done and stuff like that you, you never really quite know how things turn out will turn out you know and I have had plenty of disasters down the line but when you get something that that turns out like this it's just like well wow, you know and you remember these parts that were had filler in them we managed to get these really nicely matching well you couldn't tell to be honest but um, yeah so there we go and you know when you consider like a few weeks ago that was the first thing we did we started off with that and then we went on to making the mould to do the sides you know it seems a long time ago now doesn't it and then you know we end up we end up with this which yeah really excited about it now so next step is it's too shiny basically it looks like it looks looks a bit like a Werther's original toffee so what I'm gonna do now is give it a sanding back with some 2000 grit um, really light wet and dry paper knock the shine off it flatten any bits down kind of thing and then um, polish it and wax it. So quite a, you know, reasonably lengthy process, but it's not too bad because we did invest hours and hours in sanding it. So there's no, there's no real thickness on here. Basically, you know, we've got the, <coughs> we've got a couple of coats of red lacquer on the sides, and then a bit of, a bit of air brushing of next to nothing and two clear coats and that's all I'm going to put on I'm not going to put any more on I hate I hate thick finishes on instruments it just wasn't something that was done back in the old days and I, this is where that's got its homage sort of thing so uh, yeah we'll get on and do that and um, yeah see how it all goes lovely job um, I just wanted to give you an example of like what I mean by like um, you know finishes on musical instruments kind of thing and what I'm going for with this um, what I've done basically just with some 2000 grit wet and dry I've been over this just to knock the shine off and some imperfections but what I've done on the headstock is I've gone a bit bit to town on it and I've really flattened it flattened it off 
with um, the 2000 grit wet and dry and now um, uh, you know I, I, what you what you do you basically start sanding it and then you look across the light and you can see the little little divots and pit holes that are left by spraying and previously shoddy um, preparation um, so you sand back to get all that off now what I've done I've done that with this as much as I you know I dare and I'll polish it up now in front of your eyes and uh, you will see what I mean by uh, diminishing returns on um, on what you do so um, let's have a go I've got some uh, cutting compound here to be honest you know anything from like Halfords will do um, you know tea cut stuff this this is more of a professional one put too much on there horrible stuff I bloody hate using it stinks and sticks to your hands and like uh, gets in every nook and cranny so you get white dots everywhere I don't like it at all so let's give this uh, a polish up now and you'll see what I mean You don't need to use a, a lot of it. I mean, it's just basically a mild abrasive. I mean, a very good um, household alternative to this. I mean, if you've got, say, a bit of a, I was advising somebody the other day who had a surface scratch on the guitar, and I said, you might want to try some uh, toothpaste. You know, that's a, that's a mild cutting compound for your like, teeth, you know gets the crap off and you know that'll work on paint at times as long as the scratch isn't too deep so here we go now you can see that that top has got a really I mean there's no polish on that that's just the cutting compound and if you went over it again hope you can see in the light on there but you see what I mean and then you get you get down to like oh a really really super finish you know really shiny finish but what that does is it makes you realize how many little little holes and dings you've got in it um, so it's kind of uh, um, you know diminishing returns I mean I look across that all the light and I see a whole load more Oh, you might be able to see them on a whole load more tiny imperfections and the more you polish stuff up the, the more it gets like that so I, I, I'm not really interested in going for that sort of dedication on the polishing like I said I don't want this instrument to look new anyway but that was just to give you a look see I mean if I went over that now with some wax polish it would it would be gleaming you know but I don't really want to go there so we'll carry on with my original plan and um, we'll just go from there that was just to show you you know you know how far you can go with this sort of thing but you know if I was doing that I'd have to look at it then I'd have to like flatten it off again probably give it another coat of lacquer and start and, and, and start again just to get it perfect then you've got all these like edges to do I very much admire people who spend their time doing a perfect finish like that but it's that that's not what I'm about um, like I say that's why I'm I'm basically giving up doing uh, as new finishes on guitars for people I mean I use old products which you know cellulose and stuff which you, doesn't really match um, modern paints and things for ease of application so it's a it's a hell of a lot of work and fewer and fewer people are willing to pay you know for the time to do that kind of thing so you know, from now on, the three three R guitars concentrates on vintage finishes, kind of thing, and uh, with a bit of wear and tear built in, kind of thing. So that's where I'm going. But we'll carry on sanding on this and um, go from there. Well, I've been working away on this top, and you can see now that I've I've sanded it down and been over it with um, some of this sort of T cutty cutting compound stuff. Um, 
and it, it's kind of evened off the shine and doubled it down a little bit which I like um, I'll go over it with some wax now and just see see how it comes up um, I use this stuff which is quite a nice um, quite a, quite a good quality wax I don't know um, you know if there's alternatives sort of thing um, but this stuff is is well respected I guess so I'll give it a coat of that and, uh, and, and see what it comes up like well here we go after the waxing um, I think you can see that it's a it's a much more even shine over it now and it's not it's not so glossy um, I really like that look you know I'm I'm, I'm very happy with that um, if I wanted to get the thing looking any better than that, you, you, uh, it would uh, it would just destroy me to have to do do years of bloody sanding. I don't know how people do it. I admire them very much when they do it. Um, so that basically now is sanded wood, cellulose sanding sealer, a couple of coats, probably three coats sanded back. Um, then we've had colour coat on it, a bit of airbrushing, then two, two coats of um, clear cellulose lacquer. So, you know, with all the sanding that's in that, it's not a very thick finish at all. And so very in keeping with the old fashioned finishes. Like I say, I would have liked to have used shellac, like the, which is a rubbed on finish, um, like uh, on the original, but I've got no experience with that. And, working with a shape like this I wouldn't mind doing a tabletop first with the stuff nice and easy but so we went with the cellulose and um, yeah I'm happy with it so cup of coffee time I and mean, I've sanded the back started sanding the back and stuff already so we can go with that but I think that really looks nice so there we go let's go in and have a cup of coffee well hi there again um, I've done the first the first polishing now um, I mean there'll be more but I'll get on with assembly um, after you know for the meantime and then polish up the little bits that need a bit more attention afterwards but I think you can see now it's got a much uh, more even shine on it and looks a bit more antique sort of thing but I, I do hate this this tea cut stuff it always leaves white marks that you find for years on the damn thing it pisses me off but um, other things I've done um, fitted the truss rod cover now and I did have a and not tiny details really but I did have like a crosshead modern screw in there so I put a little brass one in there that seems like what was on the original and whenever you use brass screws be mindful you can't can't put a lot of force on them sort of thing um, you'll snap them off and uh, you have a problem of getting them out then so make sure they wind in nicely don't don't go force in them so what I think I'll do now is um, is uh, just start fitting the hardware rather annoyingly in one of my uh, new um, tuners um, I just pick one tuner out of the pack and uh, the button was broken, so uh, you know, just what you get for cheap shit Chinese crap in it. But like, um, yeah, I've glued it back, and I'll see how it goes. But I might buy a set of new new tuner buttons for it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Cheers then.